Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Max Hoven, and uh, I'm gonna, today I'm going to go over 13 indie manga and alternative graphic novel publishers that are accepting submissions. So if you're a small-time or wannabe published graphic novel writer, manga creator, or even just someone who wants to make obscure picture books or illustrated children's books or things like experimental erotic pop-up poem books, this list is for you. These are big and small press publishers that are accepting submissions, meaning you don't need a literary agent to reach out to these publishers. And this list contains publish publishers from serious writers to brand new artists looking to get their foot in the door. So like I was saying, I have 13 of them listed here, and uh, let's get right into it. I'm uh, Lord Max, a.k.a. Max Hoven. I'm a best-selling comic creator and indie film producer, and you can find all my work on my website, www.hovencrow.com. There's no spaces. The link is in the description. Um, so for many of us in America who are influenced by East Eastern culture and literature, particularly manga and anime, um, we sort of create hybrid books that aren't quite manga but aren't American comic books either. And often they're like black and white, or even st we start out with web comics. And most American comic book publishers don't want this stuff. However, this list is like that's the kind of stuff that these publishers are looking for. It is exactly that kind of international, all over the place, hybrid of different cultures, of all kinds of genres. So to start out, none of this is in any specific order. Um, it's just kind of how I threw them all together in my little spreadsheet here. So I'm going to start with number one. Number one is Yen Press. It's one of the bigger English language manga publishers, and although they don't outright say it on their website, they supposedly take unsolicited submissions. They don't have a submissions page or a submissions focused email, but in multiple places they say they're open to collaborate with new creators or just creators and I actually found out about them when I was re researching a, no a big graphic novel publisher um, Hatchet Book Group and they don't accept unsolicited, unsolicited submissions but on their website they suggest reaching out to Yen Press because they are open to read unsolicited material so for those particularly trying to publish manga I suggest you reach out to the or at least look it up Yen Press that's Y-E-N. Number two is Top Shelf Productions. So Top Shelf Productions was published, um, I, I think they're an imprint of IDD, IDW Publishing, and they've been around for a long time, since the 90s. And they publish all kinds of stuff in the kids and young adult realm especially. Um, and they say on their website... Regarding submissions, I have it quoted here. Regarding submissions, we're easy. Just email us a download link of what you'd like us to review. And they say, we cannot accept cover letters, plot synopsis, or scripts unless they are accompanied by a minimum of 10 to 20 completed pages, i.e. fully inked and lettered comic book pages. Essentially saying, they want finished work. You, you can't pitch them ideas or half completed projects. Um, but that's top shelf. That they're a big time one that's accepting submissions and I'm not going to go over I suggest you guys just go to their websites and look them up because I'm not going to say oh they have these books and they're this good that's for a whole separate video when I dive into like who's the best right now I'm just getting them out there so number three first second books uh, they are a graphic novel publisher located in New York City they say we publish graphic novels in every genre and for all age reader, readers of all ages our graphic novels are available online, in libraries, in comic book shops, shops and wherever books are sold. Um, I'll note they, fo they focus primarily on gra graphic novels for kids and young adults, not adults, and definitely nothing seriously dark or mature. Um, but they're a big-time publisher with recognizable names, um, but they also publish new-timers as well. They uh, say, if you're an established writer or artist who is submitting a project to us, in a similar vein, uh, sorry, I, I quoted this from their website, So, but the, basically they're saying that if, if you're wanting to pitch them, here's what you should send. A pitch letter explaining who you are and what your proposed book is about, a book summary, 
some character and setting sketches, and copies of your previous work that is in the same vein as the project you're submitting. So that was first, second books. Number four is Drawn and Quarterly. This is a huge, big-time publisher that's been around for a long time. They published kind of more of the, like, obscure stuff. I I'll give you my rundown. So, as they say, over the past 30 years, Drawn and Quarterly has grown from a single-issue magazine to an internationally renowned publisher of the world's best cartoonists. They publish high-quality graphic novels, usually in the more alternative... Uh, this is my note. They publish high-quality graphic novels in the more alternative, poetic, and dramatic genres from authors all over the world. Um, but they don't... Nothing mature or heavily dark. They're, once again, mostly young adult and uh, some adult books. Um, sorry, they're mostly young adult and adult books, but they publish some kids' stuff, too. But that's drawn in quarterly. Number five is Silver Sprocket. Silver Sprocket is a San Francisco-based publisher, gallery, and retail shop championing socially conscious, conscious and independently produced comic books and graphic novels and related arts. So they're kind of, they're like a, a hybrid to where they're a, they're mainly a retail shop, but they're a big one. And in addition to that, they basically take on um, they. I forget what you call that, maybe like consignment to where they basically can take your book and sell it in their shop. And if it does well, they'll then publish it and try to, they'll take you on as like, they'll publish your work and try to get into other shops. But they start out to where they just, they try it out at their own shop. And so here's how they phrase it. If you self publish your own comics or are an indie publisher yourself, we'd love to check out your comics and consider them for our retail shop. Show us what you have in person at our headquarters or find us at a comics fest. Our present focus is on making a space uh, and making space for work by local cartoonists and what we find impressive at festivals. Feel free to mail a sample of your comic along with pricing information to our store address listed above. Um, so that is Silver Sprocket. Excuse me. Number six is the Mansion Press. So they they don't publish much, but what they do, it's by big time people, and it's mostly manga. So they've published stuff by like huge names like Shintaro Kago, and I'm not sure if I'm saying their names, but right, but uh, or Daisuke Ishiba. They publish mature and dark stuff, um, but they like I was saying, they also don't publish very much. That, but definitely check them out, especially if you're um, a manga creator. So if, as they say on their website, if you are an illustrator or you make comics, send your projects to, and then they have an email address. And they say, for submissions, please, e please email a low-resolution PDF and cover letter um, to the site. Number seven is Fantagraphics Books. Fantagraphics should be pretty known, uh, especially in like modern times. I feel like Ed Pisker is a, a big time name, and his Red Room uh, comic series or, um, is published through them, I believe. And it's it's that's a pretty heavy book. Um, so they publish everything that's like mature and alternative, including manga and erotic stuff and political dramas and even sports dramas. They're, they're kind of all over the place and they go heavy. Um, but they're, they're a huge publisher and um, I'm not sure what it takes to get with them. But as they say on their website, they take submissions. So they say, please submit a minimum of five pages of completed art um, so that we can get an idea of what you deem a fin finished product product and so that we can adequately evaluate your skill at blending visual and textual storytelling elements please include a synopsis of your storyline and indicate the length of the work uh, and then they also say please note that we do not look at work submitted in digital format whether via internet email web facebook twitter etc um, so it looks like they want you to physically mail what you want to submit them uh, by mail to their submissions editor and they expect it to be uh, you know probably 
just like anyone else, like a finished product product with, you know, your synopsis and every af- affiliate stuff to get them intrigued. Sorry, so number eight is Tiny Splendor. Tiny Splendor is a super small and very alternative, artsy, and poem-focused publisher. They started in 2012 as a tiny collective, traveling around, sharing their friends' uh, artwork out of a small wooden fold-up gallery. And then they say uh, on their website, so since then we've grown into two separate studios, one in Berkeley and one in Los Angeles, providing print and publishing services to artists locally and from around the world we continue to pursue self-publishing and a love of ink on paper producing print editions zines books apparel and more so these are definitely one of your more alternative obscure kind of publishers if you go to their website and you look at what they are producing it's very artsy kind of stuff uh it's very like uh, you know maybe even they only print things in like one or two colors to where if it's not black and white, it's just – it's it's very unique looking. I'm not sure what you ki- call that kind of printing. But like they're saying and, – and they and that's for people that are publishing like short stories that might go into zines or, um, or even just really small books, you know, like they'll, they'll publish a, a, like just little things, you know, like the, the size of like smaller than your hand. Yeah, check them out. Um, number nine, I put Andrew McNeil Publishing. Andrew McNeil Publishing is a leader. This is from their website. Is a leading publisher of poetry, inspiration, humor, and children's books, and li- and children's books and licensed popular calendars. We publish as many as 150 books and 200 calendars annually. We are happy to consider submissions from creators and literary agents via email or regular mail, but materials submitted by any other means will not be considered. It's funny how you get like back and forth. Like some people are like only mail, and other people are like nothing. You, you just send you know, only email or only through our submissions page. Number ten is No Brow Press, and. There's no spaces there. It's just one word, no brow, second word, press. No brow publishes mostly alternative kids' graphic novels with diverse and contemporary themes. That's my note. As they say, no brow burst into ex- existence in late 2008 as the joint creative endeavor of two friends and, and ex Central St. Martin's alumni, Sam Arthur and Alex Spiro. Since its inception, No Brow Limited has sought to make great design, groundbreaking, groundbreaking art and narrative, lushes, production values, and environmentally conscious and is uh, luscious production values and, and environmental consciousness central to its mission. Sorry, that was a handful, mouthful. Uh, they basically just say, email your submissions, and they give a guideline. They say, we will require a full synopsis and sample of writing with brief written character studies with principal character sketches. If you are an illustrator, author, or an illustrator, an author duo, you should supply a minimum of 10 finished pages in the pitch to give us a taste of the look and feel of the proposed book. At this point, I feel like that's standard. Like Most of the time, for those who have never pul- pitched a publisher before, you should have your your product pretty much done, and you're just sending them samples. You don't want to only do the bare minimum to send a publisher. Like You should just assume that you're trying to make the best product ever, and you're sending it to the publishers that you feel fit your genre. And I'll say this now before I finish like the last three, is that when you are pitching a publisher and looking up these publishers don't just submit your stuff to everybody you should be buying and reading at least a few books from each of these publishers to really get a feel for the quality of their work look up how much they're selling and and like try to match like you should look at someone's book and then look at your book and be like mine's of the same genre and quality as this one so i'm going to submit to this person If it's not of the same caliber in both quality and, like, talent and, like, genre and and storyline or, you you know, 
there's there's no point in even reaching out to these people. Like you'll you'll just uh, waste their time and yours. So number eleven, I have by Olympia. They say we are a small operation located in Portland, Oregon. We started back in 1999 in Olympia, Washington, as a way to help our friends sell their awesome handmade items online, and have since grown to have a lot more friends from all over the world. We both distribute and publish a variety of goods from amazing artists. If you'd like us to carry your work, the best thing to do is send us an email with links to images of products and goods you'd like us to carry. We don't have any formal submission policy or any hard and fast rules about things we will or won't carry. Nice. Number 12, I have Iron Circus. Iron Circus is small, but they seem to put out some quality young adult and adult graphic novels, especially erotic graphic novels, and even print versions of webcomics and manga-style graphic novels. Uh, directly from their website, they say, Here is what Iron Circus wants. We want graphic novels. Proposals for graphic novels previously unpublished in print, between 100 and 500 pages in length, aimed at readers 10 years of age and older, both color and black and white proposals will be considered, all genres with exceptions of superheroes, zombies, and large type books for young readers will be considered. Number two, they're looking for erotic graphic novels. Same thing between um, previously unpublished, between 100 and 500 pages. They accept color and black and white. Erotica submissions will be part of the Smut Peddler Presents imprint. Um, and Smut Peddler, Creator, and Content Guidelines requiring sex positivity and consent will apply to these submissions. Um, they also say they're accepting online comics previously uncollected into many print volumes. So they're saying, do you have an online comic that has been running for a while? Want to make a jump to paper? Let us know. Maybe we can help. The last one I'm going to go over, guys, is uh, probably a pretty known and popular one, Oni Press. Oni Press is famous for the Scott Pilgrim graphic novels, but they're also one of the biggest teen and young adult graphic novel publishers out there. And they're both in stores and comic shops. They release floppies as well. Um, but they are accepting pitches. I don't think they're always accepting pitches. If you go to their website, they'll like say, at this time we're not accepting anything, at this time we are, and here's what we're looking for. And at this time in 2023, this is what they're saying. They are saying they are looking for pitches. Cartoonists and writers, we're looking for pitches. If you are a cartoonist who can write and draw, we'd love to see what you have. Writers, this is the day you've been waiting for. We are looking at story pitches without necessitating an artist attached. If you already have an artist lined up, you think is up to snuff, fantastic. But if you're a writer who needs help finding an artist, if, if your pitch is that good, we will help partner you up. And they say uh, our illustrators and colorists can also send their portfolios. For those colorists out there, um, I'll make another list of publishers that are looking for colorists. Um, it's going to be a lot shorter than m my other ones, but uh, they're out there, and I'll try to make a video for that. But uh, I think that ends this video. And like I was saying, so yeah, on that note, like these are for those who are wanting to create. You have a story. You don't know exactly how you want to release it. You know, you're not. It's not gonna go in comic shops. You've got a whole graphic novel, hundred pages, and you'll see almost every other video I, I have out there. I stay, and you'll see why some of these people said they want like that. One of those last ones was one of a hundred pages or more. That's why I suggest when you write even comic series, uh, the shortest one you should have is at least you know if you like a four issue mini series that adds up to a hundred pages or close to it. Because whenever you release these as graphic novels, or if you just don't get accepted by a comic publisher and you just want to, or you want to go straight to graphic novels like through one of these publishers. They want them at least 100 pages because it's a book. You know, this, is, this isn't floppies. So that's all I have to say. Uh, once again, I, uh, it, you can check out my work at www.hovencrow.com. I have a comic series titled Liquid Kill that's still running right now. And I'll have more announcements for that throughout the year and into next year, hopefully. 
And uh, I also have a graphic novel titled It Eats What Feeds It, which came out from Scout Comics in 2020. And I believe it will be going in bookshops uh, in early 2024. I know, three years delayed, but it happens. So um, catch you all later. Thanks. Bye.